Hello boys and girls, welcome to my channel, I'm for Classic and welcome to Benchart. So for today what I do have in here, it is Dreadout 2, this game it is developed by Digital Happiness and it is using Unreal Engine 4. So Digital Happiness are pretty much probably the only international Indonesia studio and they seem to focus a lot on horror games based on Fatal Frame, the classic Fatal Frame, or I believe the name it was uh, Project Zero. Yeah, probably it was that. Alright, so yeah, they make horror games and I actually did enjoy to try the first game, I haven't finished yet, better we played it despite I own them on Steam. So I decided to try this second game and I feel very ashamed because uh, as a benchmarker I forgot you to, so to show you the settings that I'm playing the game. But first let's just check the requirements. This game asks for, these guys ask for an FX 8350, 8 gigs of RAM, I think it is wrong. 4 gigs of RAM it is more than enough for this game. And they also ask for an R9 280X with 3 gigabytes of VRAM, I also think this is wrong because our HG 7850 handles the game quite well, even with 2GB of VRAM. So I decided to test the game using the high preset and medium preset. The high preset uses 93% of resolution scaling, and I was able to get an average of 31 frames per second, but unfortunately the 1% low it was 24, which was below 30 frames per second. So reducing the game to medium settings, which uses 90% of resolution scaling, I got a good average of 56 frames per second with a 1% low of 39. But I thought that the median settings I had a big downgrade because you lose reflections, you lose VM distance, you lose a lot of stuff when reducing to median on this game. And so I decided to use a custom setting, which despite I can't show you here because I forgot to record that. Oh, actually I didn't. I thought I had I forgot that. I'm so sorry. So as you can see, this is the settings. All right, it is pretty much high settings. And I just reduce a shadow quality to median and post-processing. And I'm using 83% of resolution scaling, which should be equivalent to 900p. Reducing the shadow quality in this game uh, reduces most of the shadows during daytime. Alright, uh, you know, the wires of the streets, um, the building shadows, all of that are removed. And I apply the static shadow built in in the textures, which doesn't look as good as the shadows. Uh, that are cast by using the eye, sh the eye settings. But still, you still get dynamic shadows from characters and moving objects, so it is not really that bad. During nighttime, reducing the shadow quality to medium impacts the distance uh, which you see lightning effects, alright? So instead of being a shadow quality thing, it is more of a lightning distance. But it is making a huge impact in performance and that's why I do recommend you to drop the setting from the eye settings to median settings in order to have a great, great performance boost. Post-processing also happens, also helps a little bit and I believe this is mostly due to screen space and ambient occlusion since it reduces the quality of it. Alright, and all the rest of the settings are set to high. Like I said, 83% of resolution gaming should be close to 900p and I think it looks pretty fine. Much better than playing the game entirely on median settings, that's for sure. And that's the performance that you can expect. So that's why I think that the minimum requirements are simply wrong. Now about the game. I mean, there are a, there is a lot to talk about this game. The game, like I did tell you before, it is, uh, you know, it is a spiritual successor of Fatal Frame. I haven't played Fatal Frame, but I know how it works. It is pretty much uh, a game where you see spirits and ghosts and stuff like that. And you pick up a camera and you can actually see them and take photos to fight them or just to make them abandon the possessed body that they are using it. You know, that's mostly the game itself. But this game follows the same trend, the same trends, all right, but fully developed by a very, very indie group of developers did I, that I did told you that it is digital happiness. happiness. I remember to, when I first tried the first game, I remember the studio, it was just a small cubic, a small cube, uh, with a lot of guys <laughs> pretty much all over each other with CRT monitors. They didn't have they didn't have any condition to develop their game and yet they were able to release the game and it was kind of a success inside the in the in the community and they got money to do a DLC and even this second game using Unreal Engine 4, which doesn't look really bad in my opinion. Although despite this game I have 
one of the despite this game I have good stuff about to talk about it I mean um, when I played this game I got a lot of goosebumps playing this because I think that the sound and the music and all the ambience the atmosphere it is really really well done in this game I really think that if you are looking for a another game or if you are looking to play something close to Fatal Frame what it was before this game completely it is worth the money because it only costs 15 euros on Steam it is really really cheap and you might be asking why this game it is so cheap well that's where the issues start because the story it is not really great uh, but still I do recommend you to play the first game first since the second game follows the story from the first game but whatever if you don't want to do it on the menu they offer um, a, a quick resume where you can actually see what happened on the first game so it's not a big deal if you don't want to buy the first game but still uh, there are a lot of stuff like for example there is n not too much voice acting and uh, this is not an issue in my opinion but cutscenes and the animations on cutscenes are laughably bad they are really bad they feel like bugs but they are not bugs they are just really bad these guys don't know how to do cutscenes all right uh, also, the gameplay could be so much better. I mean, boss fights, the first boss fight that you are going to see in here, it is completely bad. And looking to see uh, user reviews, you will see that uh, a lot of people are complaining about that. They say that the boss fights are just crap, the gameplay, or the fighting system of this game, it is uh, utterly crap, which is disappointing. But still, if you are, like I said, this is not too much different from Fatal Frame, so if you actually did play Fatal Frame, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this game anyway. And I'm actually having, um, when I did try this game, I had a good time trying this, a little bit scary and all, but I got a good time playing this, because this delivers what it promises. It is a good order game, but gameplay-wise, it is not really a big thing. And that's why the game, it is actually so cheap. And that's why I do recommend it, because this is very cheap. If you are really looking to a Nordic experience, like I said, based on Fatal Frame, this is completely mandatory to get since the price it is so low. And it is on Steam, so it is not an Epic, exclus Epic Store exclusive or anything. So you can simply get the game with no issues whatsoever. And as you can see, despite the minimum requirements say that you don't have PC to play the game, you can actually play the game with no issues. Alright guys, so I think that's all that I want to talk about uh, Dreadout 2. Hope you keep enjoying the rest of the video, and I do hope to see you soon. Goodbye.
that caused all these accidents lately. She's the absolute worst. <laughs> Friends are dead! Ida, Selly, Yaya, and Donnie, Miss Siska, D-E-A-D, -E dead! What a psychotic murderer! to show up. Let's get this vengeance party started! Yeah, man. 